In last week's episode, we finished at this stage the crisp paint job with the pin wash. And, and basically, it's like it just came out of the factory. There is absolutely zero weathering on this tank. And we need to get to the next stage from this to this, where the tank is now showing a little bit wear and tear. It's got that lived in look. And this is the first stage. And in this episode, we're going to concentrate purely on the chipping. So let's get into this. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Splits with me, Fujit. Now, again, I apologize. I'm normally used to doing videos about tank game, so my camera work isn't the best. But to start our chipping technique, we're going to move to the tried and tested sponge technique. So what's this about? Well, firstly, I take a very light paint, in this case, Vallejo Buff, mixed with a drop of white to give it that really light look. You're then going to add a little bit of retarder and a little bit of tap water, tone it down a bit, and then you're going to take your sponge, any old sponge will do, and you just dip it in the paint, and then you remove as much of the paint from the sponge as humanly possible. You can see I'm just hovering above a sort of kitchen towel here, and I use the kitchen towel to dab the sponge until most of the paint is removed, and then you just do this. You dab it onto those areas that would get quite a lot of superficial chips. Now the idea behind this particular base coat chip is this is where the paint's just been scuffed. These aren't the deep chips going right down. So we're just scuffing the paint here, which is why we're taking a very light color. And all we're doing was just dabbing those edges, dabbing the model, um, where in the areas where the crew would cause wear and tear. Now the thing is, a lot of people can overdo chipping and a lot of people can underdo it. And the, the, the idea behind chipping is to think about how the tank would look and act in real life. Now I've seen a lot of desert tanks, funnily enough, I've been on them. And there are, in the desert there's a lot of wear and tear. The sand is pretty coarse and rough and it does cause a lot of chipping. And you know, the crew also chip a lot of the tank's paintwork. The thing is, it doesn't normally rust. So you've got to be mindful of that. And you've got to think about where the crew are going to be putting their feet, what are they going to be using, and you need to concentrate on that area. Once we've done the sponge chipping, then we're going to take a soft paintbrush, a very thin paintbrush, and we're just going to sort of start making bigger chips. And as I said, this is just the superficial coat where the top coat of paint has been chipped away. And when you've got three-tone camos like this, then they're, they're basically sprayed one on top of the other. So you're always going to have those chips of the undercoat coming through. This isn't down to the bare metal. This is just the undercoat. So all we're doing was just sort of refining these chips where the crew would be sticking their feet and stuff like that. This area I am, I'm doing a lot of attention because this is where the tow cables will be eventually. So the crew is going to be you know, mucking around with tow cables and it's going to cause superficial chips, etc, etc. And they're going to be using, you know, climbing up on those parts of the tank. And that's always going to cause chips. So this is the, the idea. We're trying to replicate where the tank would get worn down a little bit. And it's not every edge. So you've got to think about which parts of the tank are the crew going to be looking at, which parts of the tank would realistically be chipped a lot and hatches like the driver's hatch here well they get chipped heavily same with the side skirts and as you can see this is what the technique looks like once you've finished and you know, again apologies for the camera work but we're looking at what the technique's going to look like we then take our chipping paint from AK and what we're going to do we're going to take some areas and we're going to fill them in basically we're not going to fill them in fully and this is where it now goes down to the bare metal. That's important because not every single chip is going to go to the bare metal. And what we're trying to achieve here is that look that we've got the superficial chip where the paint is just flaked off. Down and then inside of that we've got the bare metal or the undercoat metal. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. And again, you're trying to think about well what's going to chip in where. And the fenders or the side skirts or whatever you want to call them on tanks get 
chipped a lot. I mean, I remember looking at a Challenger 2 in, in the Gulf War, and boy, it was heavily chipped. And there's lots of references in the Matilda on the internet that you can see. Some of them look like they're in pristine condition, some of them are very, very dirty, and some of them incredibly chipped. Because these are workhorses, you have to remember that, you know. And when they're running through the sand and the dust and the rocks, and there's a lot of rocks in the Tunisian desert, it does throw up onto the side skirts, which is why they're there, and it, it does cut into them. And you do get a lot of chips, um, even though a lot of people don't think it does. And this is the effect that we're looking for. It's heavily chipped, but don't worry, guys. It's going to get toned down eventually when we start getting to the weathering process proper. But this is the effect we're trying to look for. We're trying to look for this heavy chipped effect. And as I said, we're trying to think about how the tank would act in real life. And obviously, don't forget the turret. So you need to do that one as well. And it's not going to be every part of the turret. There's going to be some of the edges, mainly where the crew are going to be sticking their feet and dragging their equipment, etc., etc. So don't, like I said, a lot of people have a tendency to overdo this. And a lot of people have a tendency to underdo it. And you've got to think of the environment that the tank is in also. And in an, ab in an abrasive environment like the desert, they get chipped quite a lot. But oddly, they don't rust as much because it's a very dry environment and there's very little moisture to permeate into, the, into these edges, into these chips to cause rust as such. But they do get incredibly chipped and incredibly dirty. So that's the effect we're aiming for. We're getting to this stage. We've now done all the chipping. The model is starting to come together. Um, you can see here, I've also painted some of the bits and bobs, but we'll deal with that next week. Some of the equipment, like the wooden handles and the metal bars. But we'll get to that next week, because in the next episode, we're going from that to this, the weathered Matilda. Yes, even with some of the stowage stuck on. So hopefully that will interest you, because that is next episode, episode number five. Until then... Thank you for watching my video. I'm still getting used to doing modeling videos, so forgive my very bad camera work. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching, and until the next time, guys, stay safe out there, and I hope to see you again in the next episode. Bye for now.